coming at you with a video today about this little gem right here now when I first saw Rogue One I like many people were blown away by not only just the the new locales but also the new armors that the stormtroopers had particularly the shore trooper and like a lot of people initially I kind of assumed that the the bandoliers that they were wearing were just another version of the MP40 German uh, submachine gun pouches that you see the sand troopers in Star Wars, in the original Star Wars, um, wearing on their pauldrons, like this. But the, 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 the main difference is, is, number one, those are black, and they usually only consist of three magazine pouches. So this was something that was a little different. And uh, it's been very popular and they're getting harder and harder to find as more people get into the short trooper costume. And now that Solo, a Star Wars story, is coming out, uh, there's a whole brand new trooper that has these and that's the Mud Trooper. So you're going to see the supplies of these really start to dwindle. Um, you can find them in crappy condition for about 12 bucks, but a lot of times it'll cost you $20 in shipping just to get it from Europe to here, uh, to get a nice one. I think I spent like $56 on this and that was, um, with shipping. This one here I got because I bought a, a batch of six of them. Um, and I got it, by the time I got done, it was like 17 bucks, 12, 17 bucks, something like that. And I was able to, to sell, uh, a few of them to people to help raise money for things such as doing this channel, um, and getting the supplies I needed for the different projects that I had. And, uh, you know, it wasn't like I was going into the, the antique, uh, military surplus, Market, but it did give me a it did give me an idea of you know just how widely ranging the quality of these particular items can be, as well as their availability. Now, one of the things that I bring that up for is as the numbers dwindle, the crappy ones are going to be the ones that are going to win out. So if you happen to get one, you might get lucky, but it might be one of these pieces of crap. If you're not lucky, it won't even come with this. Now this is the Euler pouch. This is an example of a nice one. This is a not so nice one. Um, these go actually on the back armor of those little skirt pieces that uh, the short trooper has. So. If you're not careful, you may go ahead and spend 20, 30 bucks on one of these and not even get one of these. So you want to really be sure you take care of that. So what, what are you going to do? Well, because I have one that I'm definitely going to keep in reserve that's nice, I wanted to take the time and show it to you, show you what you should look for. Um, 
you know, the, the hinge stitching and all that sort of stuff. The grommets, I think they call these the sh Chicago snaps. Um, all intact. You look on the back, the leather loops there also have the same snaps. Uh, the good ones will come with actually a, a cleaning rod in the cleaning rod space right there. You're not going to get a bunch of rot, dry rot. You can see that it's it's in decent condition. It's, it's, I would compare this to a to a well worn in baseball glove, and you can actually treat the leather the same way you would a baseball glove. You can go out and get the expensive lanolin stuff that you get at the sporting goods store, or you can get a can of Barbasol. Barbasol shaving cream has lanolin in it. It's something that a lot of us uh, use as an old school way of breaking in our baseball gloves. And uh, that'll soften up the leather real nice. It'll give it kind of a lustrous sheen. Um, one of the things that you're going to notice right here is the difference in color. There is no standard color for this particular item. This is a 19, it's a M56 Yugoslavian SMG bandolier. The, uh, the uh, M56 uh, submachine gun was based on the Smizer MP40. There by is why you have the similarities in the magazine holders. But being produced in the Communist Eastern Bloc you know, they, they made things out of what they could get their hands on. This is an example of what a lot of people would call a Romanian red type of a color. Um, you know, it's darker, it usually has a better luster to it. This is what you might call a more blonde uh, color. And the thing is, is that these, these guns and these bandoliers have actually proliferated. Uh, the M56 was in use in Yugoslavia from 1956 till about 1999. And of course, in between there, Yugoslavia broke up into several different smaller um, republics. And they had the uh, they had the Bosnian Civil War, for example, and you had the Serbs fighting the Croats, and the Muslims fighting the Serbs, and you had all kinds of problems over there. But um, the other place that a lot of these weapons ended up with in, is North Korea, of all places. So I imagine there's still quite a few of these floating around, not only in, uh, in uh, Eastern Europe, but Asia. But they're going to be hard to get because I mean, you're not going to be able to import something from North Korea. It's not going to happen. So what do you do? Well, what I decided to do since I have my nice one here that I'm not going to part with. I also have my crappy one here that, quite frankly, I'm not that happy with the quality. So what I decided I would do for you is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to disassemble this. I'm going to disassemble this and I'm going to do the measurements for you. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around and make patterns. And I will make the patterns available. And I'm going to do some, um, try reconstructing this uh, in various different uh, materials. Uh, eventually I will do a leather reproduction. I'm going to do a pleather or a synthetic leather, which you can get at any Michael's store or, or Beverly's Fabrics or something like that for you know, relatively cheap. Uh, I may eventually try to do a one out of Warbla. There's various different ways you can do it. Um, the quick and easy would be have none of these things actually open. You know, um, just fold the letter, fold the letter, fold the letter. You can sew it, you can hot glue it, whatever it is you want to do as long as it's going to hold together. But you got to start with the pattern. So. That's what this next series is going to be about. I hope you uh, will join me on it, and we'll see where we go.